What is an apostle? Apostolos means someone who is sent. Jesus is referred to as God's apostle in Hebrews 3. And see, this is where this word meets up with what we've talked about so far. God is on a mission, and Jesus is sent on that mission. And he recruits 12 apostles and sends them. Sends them as representatives of his kingdom, two by two, out and back. But that's not the exclusive number of the apostles. Paul is sent to the Gentiles, apostle to the Gentiles. Barnabas is called an apostle. Others are called apostles. You don't hear too many people named Epaphroditus, but he's an apostle. We named our daughter Junia after Andronicus and Junia, who are arguably apostles. So the word has both the narrow sense of the 12 and it has a wider sense of what it means to be sent in this mission. And what is their proclamation? What is that good news? The kingdom of God has approached. So an apostle is an emissary of the kingdom of God, an ambassador of the kingdom of God, particularly with regard to the 12 and Paul in a, in a kind of narrower sense. And you'll see the connection between the other meanings. An apostle is a witness to the resurrection of Jesus because the core content of this good news is Jesus's life. It's that Christ has risen, risen indeed, and has appeared. Has appeared to Cephas, has appeared to the Twelve, has appeared to James and all the apostles, and many more. Last of all, Paul says, even unto me. An apostle, especially in the first generation here, means a witness to the resurrection. Someone who's, someone who's Evangelism is credible because it's an eyewitness report. It's eyewitness news. Apostles are represented as the heads of Israel. The twelve are the head of Israel in the New Jerusalem. And apostles are described as the foundation of the church. Christ being its cornerstone, the apostles being its foundation. So check this out. There's two dynamics going on in these, in these descriptions. On the one hand, apostolicity is the foundation of the church. On the other hand, apostolicity is what others have in common with that foundation. It's what built, what's built on that foundation. What is built on the foundation of the apostles is the apostolic church. If you built on another foundation, it wouldn't be the church. It would be some other organization, some other institution. You find apostolicity at the center of the church in Jerusalem, guarding the traditions of Jesus, and you find it at the frontiers of the church. You find it in Paul and Peter and others who are going out with the good news. The apostolic church is both centered and adventurous. And the center of the church and the frontiers or the margins of the church where the good news is going are one. There are one apostolic church being apostolic, being sent on Jesus' own mission. So there is a deep continuity, a deep commonality, a fellowship of the center and the frontier of the originals and the present day. Of the old new and the new new. Where we're going to go with that is the relationship between the church and the world. Christians can sometimes fall into one or another form of favoritism. Either we favor the old new and we get kind of stodgy and do nothing but rehearse past accomplishments and past positions and past 
dogmas without remaining open to the collision of the gospel in new settings with the world. And then other Christians can get a little too entranced with the frontier and forget the center and get so enamored of, of these new collisions of the gospel with the world that they forget where the Holy Spirit's already been and where the gospel has already gone. So the trick, the trick in the apostolic church is to remain apostolic in both senses, to be centered and to be open. There are churches and schools and traditions that are all about being centered and not particularly open. There are lots of traditions and churches that are all about being open and they're not particularly centered. Neither one of those gets at the dialectic of apostolicity. One of them just ends up assimilating and the other one kind of ends up fossilizing and ghettoizing. And, and the genius of apostolic Christianity is that it can avoid both of those by remaining fully both. And it's not really a balance between being centered and being open. It's, it's being centered on the gospel, on this story of God, including all things in, in the fellowship of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit through the bride and the bridegroom. Being centered on that commits us to being open, but being open in the right ways. And when we're open in the right ways and we, see, and we discern out on the frontier of the gospel and out on the margins of the church, when we discover signs of his kingdom, that's the same kingdom that approached 2,000 years ago in Jesus Christ before his original apostles. So being open in the right ways will expose to us the same new creation that was there and center us. This is not a balance of two competing opposite alternatives. This is correctly discerning each one and the other.